are singing to the beginning to, 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 wor to open our worship hour hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night. All is calm, all is bright. It sounds beautiful in the hymn, doesn't it? But was it really silent night? Was it really all that was bright? Or was it really a night where, uh, where everything was happening the usual way? Night that was maybe filled with grief, cries, screams, distress, depression, pain. In this kind of world, Jesus has come for the benefit. Silent night. Was it really holy night? Or was it really sinful as every other night and thousands of, others, uh, th thousands of other nights after that? What does the night cover when the sun falls? A lot of consequences of sin, isn't it? And this is what, what Jesus this is the context in which Jesus has come. I will read something in the language that you will never understand. Maybe you, will, you may, some of you may. Now I wonder. But, but it's, it's interesting. Wierzysz, że Bóg się zrodził w betlejemskim żłobie, lecz biada, jeśli się nie zrodził w tobie. Now, did you get any of that? <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> because it's Polish. So you can't understand that. It's a heavenly language. You know that. <laughs> anyway, this is a rhyme. This is a, a, a quote from Polish poet. And I will try to freely, freely uh, translate it for you. You believe that God was born in Bethlehem's uh, uh, stable, but woe unto you if he was, he, if he was not born in, your, in you. Again, you believe that God was born in Bethlehem's stable, but woe unto you if he was not born in you. Adam Mickiewicz was born in, uh, on 24th of December 1798. The date itself is significant to Adventists, isn't it? 1798. And he died in 1855, not 1844, uh, but 1855. So you can see that he was living his life falls exactly smack onto the advent revival that was taking place in the world and we are at the moment in the advent that's what is believed according to some liturgies we are living pre christmas that's advent and adam mitskevich was focusing on on these things of on importance of Christ in your life. Christmas is, as we are reading it in the Wikipedia, Christmas is an annual commemoration of birth of Jesus Christ. Civil holiday in many of world's nations and is celebrated by an increasing number of non-Christians. So it becomes kind of, whether you committed to it or not, it becomes a celebration. And as you would imagine, because of that, it's losing its significance. Because basically, everyone does it. The, 
the, the Christmas brings with, with itself the cuteness of a newborn baby. The story of angels, the story of poor shepherds, the political plotting behind it, the intervention of heaven by the angels, and the, and the, uh, the, the evidence of, of that, that uh, intervention of heaven that brings a special appeal to Christmas. It is in a way demonstrating that there is a universal hunger, universal hunger for the desire of ages. But is there anything more to Christmas? Is there anything more to the story than just cuteness of a baby? The angels announcing birth of that baby to, uh, to shepherds or the angels guiding the shepherds to the place of birth of Jesus. Is there anything more? Can we think about more, more significant thing? How about the, the, the concept of eternal God who was creating the cosmos, who was creating every, every particle of, uh, of matter, who have become a child? an incarnated human being who have become a helpless infant given into the mercy of hands of his creation. In the, in the book of Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, verse, beginning with verse nine, 14, we read these words. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and, in the, uh, and, and are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is all thing, that all things he made have the preeminence. Verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell bodily. It's interesting. We are looking at the cuteness of a baby. We are looking at the whole atmosphere. But do we, uh, do we connect it with the, with the mystery of God incarnating into human body? God, omnipotent God, becoming a human being, becoming one of us. And when he become, becomes one of us, he becomes not for a moment, not only for the period of, of his stay on earth, he becomes a, a, associated with humanity for the rest of history of universe. He is given to humanity. It seems to us easier to think of the child of promise of Bethlehem then, uh, and and uh, think of that baby in the cradle, then of Christ who was fully God, who was, uh, uh, who was the ruler of entire universe. We can cope with the baby in our hands, but we don't know how to can handle God who is in charge of everything that, that is even in us. We like to think of a crib, we think, but feel insecure about cross, because cross demonstrates that he is the Lord. What did he come for? For some reason, his helplessness appeals to us more, maybe because we are in charge when he is helpless, uh, but we are m more uncomfortable with his omnipotence and his deity. It is good to see significance of birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. 
It is good to celebrate it. It is good uh, to, to, to mark that time. But we need to follow him to grow up time, to grow up years, to grow up sti statue, where he becomes a part of our life. And when his life becomes significant to us, we need to allow the baby of Bethlehem to become Jesus Christ. We need to, be, uh, to, to allow Jesus Christ to become the ruler and Lord of all. And, and our hearts and minds are included into it. He will not stay forever a baby. But when he will, will leave, he will, be, he will live in our hearts. He will be in charge of those hearts. He must be allowed to change the reality of our lives and he needs to be Lord and King of our lives. In Ephesians chapter 4 uh, verse 15 we, we read, uh, we are encouraged to grow into him who is the head that is Christ. And in Philippians chapter 2 we find another interesting uh, text, Philippians chapter 2 beginning with, with verse 5 with the, we, we, find, uh, we read these words let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of bondservant and becoming in, in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. This is what the omnipotent, powerful creator become a humble human being, a, a poor, poor and weak baby. And he did that in order that he could benefit you and me. Do we see the significance of it? Do we see the importance of it and how, how important it is that he dwells in our hearts. Interesting text we find in 1 John uh, chapter 1 uh, verse 12. 1 John chapter 1, chapter 1 verse 12. Sorry, John chapter 1 verse 12. Maybe I will read from my notes. But as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of God. As many as have received him, to them he gave, he, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. You, you can see from this text, Jesus did not, uh, did, did, he didn't do it because we were fitting the picture. He didn't do it for us because we were fitting the picture or that we were up to it. He did it in order that we would. He did, he did it because of what he saw, the value that he has seen in us. He has seen the value in any of us. He did that because he did not uh, he didn't do it because we deserved it but he, he did it even when he saw the imperfections in our lives in order he did it in order that we would look up, up on him and we would live according to, to 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 the value that he have placed in us in first uh, john chapter 3 verse 1 through to 3 we read another uh, message Behold the manner of love the Father have, have bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Can you see that? The God have bestowed love upon us, that we would become children of God. Not what we were, what we, how we perceive ourselves, but what, that we would be the children of God. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself 
just as he is pure. Again, Jesus did it so, we, so he would show us the way. Jesus did it in order that we would not look at, at ourselves what is wrong with us. Jesus did it in order that we would behold him. And as we are beholding him, that we would change in his likeness. That when he will be revealed, we will be like him. That he will be, uh, that we will be blameless. So, do not look at your imperfections. Do not look at what's wrong with you. Look to Jesus. And you will gradually become, become like him. He will finish the job that he started in you. He will finish and bring it to perfection. For Christ to come to, to the cradle, to, be the, uh, to come out of cradle and to become a ruler uh, of our, of our light, uh, life, he needs to be permitted. Uh, he, he needs to be permitted to become like him. We need to drop out the symbols and we need to go in a, a bit a little uh, go a little bit further we need to have uh, have him in our lives he demands not just a little bit of our time at the end of the year he wants totality of our lives he doesn't need a bit of time of our lives he wants entire life it is interesting this is not just my thoughts we 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 share it in in, in in, as we are reading the scripture, I, would wa I want to quote from Rodney Buchanan. I want to read a quote from it for you. Many homes across the nations will celebrate Christmas without any mention or love for Christ. That's Rodney Buchanan. For others, there is still a sentiment uh, or feeling for the Madonna and child. But for this season to mean what it's supposed to mean, we have to go beyond, beyond decorations to dedications. We need to go beyond sentiment to surrender. Surrender to God who has chosen to come to this world for your benefit, for my benefit. If he is not Emmanuel, says Rodney, then our worship is an idolatry. But if he is who he claims to be, then he deserves our praise, our worship, our obedience, our all. The world always tried, tries to take a sacred and make it profane. Not profound, profane. It sees the humanity of Christ but fails to accept his deity it was to keep Christ it was to keep Christ in the cradle that uh, th that that, uh, that was th that is that the world that wants it wants to keep Christ in the cradle because it is afraid to submit to surrender to him to his lordship and to his kingship May the Lord will bless us. May the Lord will help us that we will not only celebrate the baby born in Bethlehem, but he may become the returning king of our own lives. May he will be filled, uh, f uh, may, he, may he will be filling our lives from day to day and bringing our image to, the, to, 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 to be, be alike to his image that when he comes we will be like him this is my prayer for each one of us amen now to close